Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. So now the budget, Obama's budget presented this week. We've done some uh, preliminary critiques of that. We don't like the cuts in the low-income heating assistance program. I see the hand of Austin the Ghoul Goolsby of Skull and Bones, an inveterate enemy of that program. Too bad for you if you freeze to death, says Austin the Ghoul Goolsby of the Obama administration, although he doesn't come out and say it in the same way that Walker uh, or somebody like this might. Uh, the, uh, the budget uh, is no good. It, uh, it proposes gouging at the expense of some of the poorest people. But the, the big problem with Obama is he essentially capitulates to the Republican austerity psychosis. The austerity psychosis informs everything that Obama does as well. So he's already surrendered before he has even started. He's eagerly looking for opportunities to surrender. Now, Boehner says, so be it. If 200,000 federal workers are thrown out of work, so be it. The Depression is an opportunity. Hey, Borders Books is about to go bankrupt. 200 stores will close. 10 or 15,000 jobs down the drain. We're headed deeper and deeper into this depression. And now, in the middle of it, the Tea Party fanatics begin to raise their voices. Here we have the... uh, Newspapers from the uh, Capitol Hill up here. Roll call. War over spending kicks off in earnest. Uh, Better coverage in The Hill. A government shutdown appears more likely now. And they line up a whole bunch of congressional insiders and observers. We have here William Hoagland, former senior aide to Senator Majority Leader uh, Bill Frist, Republican of Tennessee. This uh, guy. Uh, Hoagland says, I think the direction of the last week is the wrong direction and puts us closer on the path of a government shutdown. And that's uh, pretty much the consensus. Scott Lilly, former Democratic staff director for the House Appropriations Committee, says a government shutdown looks more likely. Lilly says, given the date now, there's no question we will need a short term continuing resolution that is to keep going on the basis of last year's budget. That's the move I think will be very difficult and raises the possibility for, sh- for shutdown. It's because Boehner says, I came here to cut the budget, cut the budget, cut the budget, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to approve anything that keeps spending at current levels, even if it means shutting down the government. And we have uh, essentially the language of the chicken game. Representative Steve King, Republican of Iowa, says if Republican members of the House are sending signals that we're afraid of the president shutting down the government, then the president will get everything he's willing to fight for. Well, as soon as you say Obama and fight in the same sentence, I don't know what planet you're living on. Uh, Here's Cantor, Republican of Virginia, the whip. Anytime we propose a spending cut, Schumer, Durbin, and Reed scream, shut down. Now, here's the problem. Uh, The reactionaries of the Tea Party would like to get the government shutdown together with the default uh, on the debt limit. They'd like to package that together so that it would truly be an apocalyptic event and they could maximize their blackmail and extortion potential against the American people. But the problem with that is that these deadlines do not coincide. The 4th of March, not the Ides of March this time, but the 4th of March is the deadline to pass some form of budget, either a continuing resolution or something else. Uh, the Reaching the debt limit comes later. It comes later in March or sometime in April or maybe even in May, depending on how creative Geithner can be in, uh, in scaring up uh, various monies. And, of course, the executive powers can be used. If you want to make these coincide, if you want to get the, uh, the government shut down together with the default, which is what the Tea Party fanatics want, then you've got to pass at least one continuing resolution. And the problem with that is if you pass a continuing resolution that gouges anything, then that's not going to go through the Senate. The House plan is expected to defund the Obama administration's implementation of health care reform. Now, wait a minute. Does that include gouging Medicare, Medicaid, and uh, payments to doctors. Hey, watch out. It's, all f- it's fine to get rid of that unfunded, uh, it's fine to get rid of the individual mandate. The individual mandate is unconstitutional. Why should I buy from a predatory private company? But 
when they say starve the beast now, they're talking about your health care services. Now, here's the problem for the, re- for the uh, Republican fanatics. You are now talking about shutting the government down in a war. There are two wars. There are really three wars. Uh, we may have more wars than, than, uh, than we can count. You are at war. And these fanatics want to shut down the federal government? Now, anybody with essential political skills could begin to portray these bums as the biggest Benedict Arnolds and Jefferson Davises of all time. But uh, Obama really doesn't want to. In the middle of this, we've got Senator Lee. This is the guy from, uh, from Utah who kicked out Bennett. This is the guy who thinks the child labor laws are unconstitutional. Hmm, Senator Lee and Toomey, Senator Toomey of the Club of Growth, reactionary ideologue from Pennsylvania. The Lee-Toomey bill says, let's enable the United States to essentially default, but without scaring the international bondholders. Uh, (laughs) This is the Lee-Toomey bill. It says, we will enable the United States government to always pay the bondholders first. The international bondholders, the Chinese, will have first claim on U.S. revenues, but uh, and after that, the American people will take what they can get. It means that they'll obviously destroy Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, unemployment benefits, and all the rest. They'll establish their priorities in this bill, and they'll have defense up there and corporate welfare and and $50 billion for oil and gas companies. They'll have all that. But when it comes to you, you will be stripped. You will be left with nothing but your eyes to cry with. Now, in the Weimar Republic, we're always looking back to Weimar Germany. We're always looking at uh, this um, parallelism, which is chilling, that emerges between these day-to-day events. And uh, let's see if I can find the quote. One of the things you had in the Weimar Republic was uh, the role of Hjalmar Schacht, the head of the central bank, who later went on to be Hitler's finance minister, of course. And uh, Schacht, uh, at various points, acted as a spokesman for the foreign uh, creditors of Germany, the people that Germany had to pay. And what these characters, Lee and Toomey, are now doing is saying, uh, we are the representatives of the foreign bondholders, and we want their interests put first over the American people. Now, obviously, we want to avoid default, but uh, this is not the way to do it. The way to avoid default is to avoid default. So uh, look now for March and April to be a time of tremendous dislocations. And if there is a default by the United States, That will be the leap into the abyss. You will rue the day. It will be catastrophic. And the effects on people will be unbelievable. Think of the troops. Suppose you have no money to buy the food. These U.S. uh, forces in the Middle East, elsewhere, they operate off local economies. They've got to have money to pay for things. An army travels on its stomach. The sinews of war are money. And if the government shuts down, you obviously there'll be lots of people that won't get their social security checks. They'll be destitute. They'll start to starve. A lot of doctors won't get their Medicare fixes. They will shut down. Naturally, the national parks. You can go through the entire thing. Go back to 1995 when we had the reactionary Gingrich and his Tea Party friend Dick Army shutting down the government. Well, people did notice, and uh, that was political suicide. This time it's going to be even worse because if the Republicans do this. The Wall Street crowd will go berserk, and they're probably finding ways to communicate that. Now, we'll go on in the last segment here. We'll give you a summary of what we found about Egypt, and for that, you've got to go to Tarpley.net and my Twitter feed, Webster G. Tarpley, at Twitter.